Hey, what's going on guys? Reed here and I'm back with another tech video. This time, we're going to be talking about how to use the Sheep Shaver emulator to run old macOS versions. Now, in this case, it's a little bit different. We're going to be doing macOS 9.0.4. And it's and you need to do it. It's way different than QEMU. You've got some different stuff, and it can run tends to run older macOS versions. So yeah, I'm gonna switch to the Mac camera, and we're gonna go ahead and do this. Okay, guys, I am back now. To do this, there's some things you need to download. You need to download the Sheep Shaver application and folder. Okay, just head to this link here to do that. Now, I recommend you use this version. You want to click this link to download it. Hold on, it's loading. Shouldn't take too long. And then you're going to want to also, for this one, you're also going to want to click the Sheep Shaver folder. You don't need this link, you don't need this link. Now, if you're, this is for High Sierra through Catalina. As that says, you can also use same version except for 10.7 through 10.12, go ahead and click the one that works with your macOS version that you're running currently. For me, it's Catalina. Next, you have this application. You shouldn't be touching this yet. Just move it to the Sheep Shaver folder. In here, you should already have a key codes file. If you don't, then really you can only use the English keyboard, like the US. This key codes file is not required. It is basically just the thing that makes it to where you can it's basically where you can use other keyboard layouts. Then, if so, then we need to get a ROM file. In order to get a ROM, I like to Google redundant, redundant robot sheep shaver. You can go ahead and go here, and you, I, if you want to run an older macOS version, go ahead. And use the old world ROM. It can run system 7.5.3 through 9.0.4. 9.0.4 is always the newest for Sheep Shaver that will ever run. And the new world can run Mac OS 8.5 through 9.0.4. So if you're going to run an older version that is below 8.5, I'd get the old world. If you need to run anything between 8.5 and 9.0.4, I would get the new world. So we're going to do the new world ROM. Please note that I'm not going to link this in the description, as sometimes downloading ROMs can, can be illegal if you're not acquiring it properly. It just violates Apple's license agreement. But basically, you'll have this ROM. You're going to want to rename this to Mac OS ROM. Make sure it's not with the file extension. You don't need .rom at the end. Move that into the Sheep Shaver folder. Go ahead and close this. Now, you can also extract this ROM file from an old Macintosh, like a Power Macintosh, or you can download the ROM update 1.0 and, and extract it using Tome Viewer. But I'm, I'm going to link, I'm going to use, let you guys use the guide to do that. But if, I just decided to search the web for this to get the ROM itself. Now, this part's important. To install it, you're going to, you most likely are going to need a Mac OS install CD. If you can't use one, you must download a CD image that was created from a retail install CD. It means it hasn't been modified in any way and was created either using Disk Utility or another program from the actual CD. We can download this from the Macintosh Garden website. Google Macintosh Garden. Just go here. I'm gonna, it's this one. I'll, I'm also gonna I'm gonna link this in the description, but Mac OS 9.0.4. You're gonna go to More Disk Images. It's gonna load. You're gonna want to find Mac OS 9.904 CD Intel, like International. That's it. And you're gonna go ahead and download it. So basically, this is gonna download. It's gonna take some time. I'll be back when that has finished. Okay guys, this is still downloading. I just want to say a few things about the ROM files and the install CD. Basically, there are is a hack available for the install CD to where you can use a model-specific install CD. You can't, not a general retail one, which the general retail one is usually the one you want to use. You can use a 
model specific CD or a restore CD, I will link a forum here that can help you get that working, but it may not work. In most cases you'll get it and it will have limitations and stuff. Another thing is that about the ROM files, I'm going to link a few guides to get from the ROM updates or use Basilisk to another emulator to get a ROM for Sheep Shaver or to get Tome Viewer. But to get Tome Viewer, you're going to need to go to the guide that I used as it's a direct download link. And yeah, in the ROM files, really the only reason I'm not linking it is just because I don't want to distribute a ROM somewhere else because of the fact that really if you distribute it, it could be considered illegal. You're usually downloading it and using it for your own use isn't in most cases. But I just don't want to get in trouble for that. But basically, usually like a general retail CD would be a CD that was like not created for a specific model. That's the kind you're going to need. Now, before we get started here, there's another thing I'd like to do while this is finishing up. I like to create a shared folder. I'm going to do it on the desktop. It can be anywhere and with any name you like. I'm going to call it shared. This folder we're going to select later. Leave it blank and empty. But this folder we're going to select later and it's going to be some and it's going to be a place where you can put files in it on the Mac OS X side where you're the one you're actually running. And then you, and then it'll show up in the emulated machine under a disk called Unix. We're going to be doing that later, selecting that later, just something you might want to create now while you're at it. Then the thing about this shared folder, it is a little buggy sometimes. And so I wouldn't really want to keep the only, the only copy of a file in there. Okay, so I see this is finished downloading. We could put that in Sheep Shaver. Then let's see here. We're going to go ahead and start installing it. So we're going to open Sheep Shaver, run it. If the ROM file is detected, if it's it'll it'll launch if with a question mark floppy if it doesn't find a rom file it'll immediately quit so please 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 make sure you have the rom file correct we're going to head to preferences now i'm going to go ahead and remove this because that was the previous one i used it saves all your files you're going to browse to the rom file here i think that's usually set by default because otherwise it wouldn't have worked browse to your shared folder here this looks about right. You, you want to leave this as any. Don't check that. Set your RAM size to whatever you want. 128, 256, 512. I'm going to leave it at 512 considering I've got plenty of memory. For the hard drive, you're going to press create. It suggests the .dsk, .dsk for disk file extension, but it's not required. Let's just call it Mac OS 9. You don't need a file extension. Now, I wouldn't leave this as default. I would rather use 500 megabytes, 1,000 megabytes, or 2,000. I've got enough for 2,000, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Press save. You should notice, it might take a minute. shouldn't take too long, just because it's a larger disk. But you'll notice it'll appear right here. This is your disk. I know it's not openable in current Mac OS, but it will work in this machine. Trust me. I've done all this before. Alright, so now that that has been created, you're going to press add right here, and you are going to add your .toast file that you should have downloaded that has your Mac OS 9 install disk. Check the box for CD-ROM for the .toast. Now we're going to configure a few other stuff. Set this to window dynamic for fast Intel machines, because slower will make it sluggish. You can leave the audio stuff as it is. Make sure all this is checked. Le you, you might as well leave this the way mine are. Because mine should be set properly. So use raw key codes. You can go ahead and browse to your key codes file. It's not already selected. This is all about preference. For Ethernet interface, enter slurp. It's not S-L-U-R-P. It's S-L-I-R-P. You can leave the rest as it is. Make sure these are checked the way they are. Don't check these two. And the save and quit, this is important. At this point, you can only press Control Escape to shut down the emulated machine. 
This is equivalent to like going into VirtualBox, pressing power off the machine. It's like a force shutdown kind of thing. It won't hurt anything because this save and quit button will not do it. Every time you change these settings, you have to press save and quit to do to actually save them. So press that. Now you have to do, you can't quit it like this. You have to press control escape on your keyboard. It'll instantly quit it. Now what you need to do is we're going to go ahead and install it. So now we can open it again and all our settings should be saved. See, here we go. It's starting up. It usually shouldn't take too long. So it'll tell you it's unreadable. For this, give it a name you'd like. And go ahead and format as Mac OS Extended. We're going to press Initialize. Just press Continue. There's nothing on it. Now, for here, these this Unix is what I was talking about. The shared folder. Not, I wouldn't mess with that yet until we fully installed it. This is your CD. This is your hard drive. Your trash and whatnot. So, for uh, all that aside, you're going to want to click the Mac OS install. We'll go ahead and launch. You can select all other, all other countries. Press continue. Select Mac OS 9. Select. Just forget the... You can go ahead and agree to all that. Now, this is important. Sometimes, I'm going to go to options. Sometimes, the, it'll freeze up on updating Apple hard disk drivers. Without... If you have that unchecked, it won't, it won't hurt anything. If it freezes up, you'll have to restart this whole process. So I'm going to uncheck it just in case because it froze up for me last time. You don't, you shouldn't have to change anything in the customize. You should be able to just press start. It will go ahead and install. Shouldn't really take too long. So I'm going to go ahead and just be right back once that is finished. Okay, guys, I am back. Almost done. It didn't take too long. It takes about five minutes or so. Probably even less, actually. I just wanted to cut it out. Now you can press quit. Go ahead and close this. Now this is where we need to shut it down. Now you can go into. Now what you need to do is you need to don't press Control Escape. Go into Preferences, remove the macOS 9.toast, save and quit. Go ahead and press shut down. You'll notice it just quits like it crashed. It didn't. Don't worry. You would see a little Apple thing that tells you to report it if it did. But now you can run Cheap Shaver again. For the final time. It, it Now it's booting only from the hard drive. The CD is not even inserted because of that. Now for using a physical CD, which is possible, but harder on newer macOS versions like Catalina, but most of the time it's harder for 10.8 and above, but that will give you stuff in the, there's stuff in the guide that will help you with that. Now we're not going to use this setup assistant. There's a really good reason why. I've tried this myself. It says this on the guide too, but once you get to once it gets to configuring network settings in the setup assistant, it'll completely lock up, and then your Mac, your emulated machine will have to will not work. So you're gonna want to quit. There's a few things we can do to get it set up. Really, it's not too much important stuff in the setup assistant, but anytime you want to go to preferences in here, an important thing is it's under control panels. You have to select from here. So for for sound to get to get sound, you're gonna control panels sound, and make sure it's set to built in. And then it's easy, as easy as that, you will already get sound. Now for Mac OS nine, it's installed with the other control panels. But if the Apple Audio extension is installed in the extensions folder, remove it. That's only for eight point five, eight point six, and eight point one sometimes. We're going to check network access next. These are just a few optional things that aren't really required to do about this tutorial. You're going to go TCP slash IP. If you see IP addresses and stuff here and a bunch of numbers, you're doing it right. These need to be set to Ethernet. It says using DHCP service or server. That's where it needs to be set. Should be good. Now, QuickTime, this is an optional thing. I, it's just you can mess around with this for fun. But the latest version is com that is compatible is 4.1.2. Basically, it's not possible to downgrade QuickTime by installing an earlier version. If you have installed a later version, you need to remove all QuickTime files first. You can go ahead and download QuickTime 4.1.2 here. We'll link that in the description. Once again, not really required, but it's a fun little thing to install in here and mess around with. A way you can get that there is using the shared folder. The shared folder, feel free to mess around with it right now. 
I'm going to create a test file and show you how that works. Let's see. I'm just going to create a new text edit document. I'll call it test. Save it. See if I don't know if it's going to be openable in there, but I'm going to just move this to a shared folder. Open Unix. And there it is. It's right there. Now, this shared folder, most of the time there is some downsides with it. Applications, most of the time they don't work in there. Now, if I just go ahead and remove test, it's gone from here too. So this is the way you're going to transfer files to and from it. But there's a few downsides with this, but I'm going to get to those later. The last thing I want to talk about is printing. With the printing, I got this working with my printer, which is an HP OfficeJet Pro 8710. Although I think I had the 6960 last time I was messing with it. But there's a guide right here that I'm going to link in the description that you can use to show how to print from this emulated machine here. It's not that advanced. I mean, it's more advanced and a little more less convenient. You, it's not just a print button that you press. But it's definitely possible and easy to set up. A couple known issues, the startup disk settings panel, panel, do not open it. Don't use it. It will cause your machine to crash. Uh, of course, I already said configuration assistant will lock up at network settings. And applications cannot run properly from this Unix disk. Most of the time when you're going to run an application, you're going to want to copy it from the Unix disk to a folder that's on the hard drive of the emulated machine. To shut this thing down, we can simply go to shut down. Most likely, it usually works. I've got, I'm going to link all this stuff in the description and the stuff that's in here. And when you're done with it, it's as easy as just deleting the Sheep Shaver folder. And maybe the shared one if you have it too. So yeah, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Everyone, thanks for watching. Hope you found it helpful. Might do a Windows version in the future. I think Sheep Shaver works on Windows. Yeah, but anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.